Hello, my name is Greg, and I go by Murphy14 on the horse racing subreddit and Murphy in the Discord. And I wanted to make a video on how to use Timeform US. And so this video, um, it's for people who maybe you're new to horse racing and you're looking for a past performance product, or maybe you already use DRF or Brisnet, and um, you want you know more data when you're trying to make you know decisions on big race weekends like Kentucky Derby or Breeders' Cup. And so um, basically what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go over this video, which might be like 30 minutes to an hour maybe, and it's just kind of go over the features of Time from US, uh, how I like to use it, and then um, you know the, the pros and the cons of it. And I'm hoping to kind of make this a two-part video um, where I kind of show time form here, and then I kind of go over the handicapping process that I like to use, um, you know, using all my tools that I like to use. And so when you go to the time form website, this is what's going to show up. Um, it has um, free races of the day, and all you have to do to get access to those is just make an account. Um, it, you know, they vote for them um, on the weekends on which, you know, races people want to see, so you can choose to do that. Um, but the ones during the week, it's just kind of the best races that are going on. Um, that day. Um, so time form, it's uh, currently $3 if you just want to buy a card, $6 if you want a day pass, and then $75 if you want an unlimited monthly pass. Uh, I currently have the unlimited monthly pass, but that's just because Saratoga and Del Mar is just kind of finishing up. And so um, I will probably transition back to what I was doing before, which is just buying the day pass on uh, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. Unless there is some sort of track that I want to start playing on Thursdays. Um, so um, we'll start here on tomorrow's race. Featured One of the featured races for the Churchill Downs card, which is the Iroquois. And so the first thing I'm going to do is talk about the class rating. And so the class rating is found here. Uh, well, actually, before I do that, um, let me just show you the preview. So when you click the preview, this is what shows up. It just kind of gives you... The rundown of all the horses that are in the field, the morning line, you know, who's riding and who's training, and then it gives you a spotlight speed figure. The spotlight speed figure, though, um, that is not the most recent speed figure. So it's just kind of the best one the horse has ran, um, you know, in the past, I don't know, maybe three or four or five starts. So um, if you just looked at this, and let's just say there was a horse that is coming off like a year or a year and a half layoff, it's just going to show whatever the number that the horse ran like a year and a half ago. It's not going to be a dash or a blank or anything. It's just going to show you um, kind of the highest one that the horse has ran. So I, I don't really take those at face, you know, like, oh, you know, that this 104, you know, that's that might not be the the last one the horse ran it might be you know their maiden race or something like that you know this 119 you know is that the you know the first or the second or the last one so i mean i look at it i kind of just gives me a big picture of everything and which horses i might want to look at a little bit harder um, but i just don't use the preview just to make all my decisions and so this tab the time from uspps this is basically you know the past performance that you want so the first thing uh, is the class rating. So the class rating for the Iroquois is 107. And so this is probably one of my favorite angles on time form because it's so hard to decide where is where does a horse fit if they're coming in from other tracks, you know, because, you know, this horse here, they're coming in from Saratoga. So how hard is a maiden race at Saratoga versus a maiden race, say, at Del Mar or Ellis Park or Gulfstream? Um, you know, this horse ran in the Saratoga Special, which is a grade two event. How hard is that compared to a graded event at Ellis Park or Del Mar, you know, or um, Gulfstream? Um, and you'll see here, there's a perfect case of that. So it says here that um, the grade two special, that's rated 100. So this next horse here, they were in uh, uh, ungraded Ellis Park's stake race. They were in uh, the Ellis Park's juvenile. So uh, it says that the Ellis Park Juvenile is rated in a 99. Uh, now, the Saratoga Special is rated in 100. 100 to 99, that's pretty much the same field. Now, if I were to ask 100% of the people, okay, which field do you think is going to be harder? The Grade 2 Saratoga Special or the ungraded 100,000 Ellis Park Juvenile Stakes? Probably 100%, they are going to say the Saratoga Special. 
but time form here says that's not the case, that those fields, that they're the same. Um, the same could be done for the maiden races they were in. Okay, so this LS Park maiden that this horse broke their maiden in was rated in 83. If I were to ask a group of people, which field do you think was harder, the Ellis Park Maiden Special Weight or the Saratoga Maiden Special Weight, probably all of the people are going to say the Saratoga Maiden Special Weight. But it says here that that's not really the case. These horses are the same. They ran in the same fields. Um, you know, and I mean, look, they're both 10 to 1. Um, but still, it's it's nice to see, okay, especially for something like the Breeders' Cup or the Kentucky Derby, how hard was, you know, uh, the Santa the Santa Anita Derby? Um, how hard was the Holy Bull? How hard was the Rebel? You know, it's nice to compare, okay, how hard was this field to that field? Um, so it pretty much does that for every race except for races where there's a lot of first-time starters. Um Let's see, this is a maiden one, it's two-year-olds, yeah. So see, there's there's no rating up there. And I don't think any of those horses have ran in a race. Okay, so a couple of them have ran in a race. But um, even then, okay, this was a 93. What is today's race rating for this race? You know, it, it's really hard to decide. Um, but, you know, that's just kind of what it is. In the future, um, you know, if you were to look at this horse again, and if there wasn't enough data to pull from it, there might just be like um, either no number where here it says 93. There might be no number or it might be a really low number. Um, I think I've seen nine or 11. And basically that just kind of says like, you know, we don't know how good or how bad that field is. Even still, you know, they, they don't know how good or bad that field is. Um, it, that was probably what was done for this one here because that F is means like okay there's a lot of first time starters in the field and so i'm going to pull up the chart and you see here only two horses had started so um at the time it probably didn't know what to rate this field at but as these horses have kind of ran back like here look nucky i know they i know they won a, the stakes race at del mar the del mar debut or del mar futurity so um it is starting to upgrade you know okay so this was a 90 or you know or it was zero but now a lot of stuff come back and we know how good or how bad that field is. We are okay giving this field a 90, right? Um, so that's the class rating. The next one I wanted to talk about was the pace projector. And so the pace projector, it's, in my opinion, pretty on point most of the time. You might see a couple horses uh, moved around. Um, I think this is a great example to not take the pace projector for what it is um, because a lot of these horses are only have like one, two or three starts under the belt. You know, you I don't in my opinion, you can't really tell what a horse's run style is going to be based off of one or two starts. You know, there could be a lot of different factors that play. Did they get a check bias advantage? What is a slow pace? Was it a fast pace? Did they stumble? Were they slow out of the gate? Um, so. I don't take the pace projector for what it is in these like really lightly raced horses. Um, so it says here it's going to be a fast pace, right? And so basically what it's doing is it's it's taking um, the pace figures that I'll show you later and it's saying, okay, there's a lot of horses that have a lot of front pace, you know? So this one horse is 111, the four horse, 111. The seven horse, 131, 117, 114. But as I'm going to show you is, okay, so this 131, I don't think that can be taken for what that actually says it is. So um, even though I love Timeform, I use it as my, my primary past performance product, it's not perfect. So it says here 131. I mean, it's uh, is that horse really one 131? Do they like to be up front? You know, it looks like they do because they ran really fast out of the gate, you know. Um, so, uh, but again, that's only just one race, and that was a maiden race. Who knows how hard this fi this field was, you know? Did the next two or three or four horses come back to win? Did they come back to not match their, their speed figures? So, um, 
it's not perfect. It does take a little bit of thinking on your part to, to judge how good or, or how bad these horses are. Now the pace projector, it's probably going to be more accurate for horses that do have quite a bit of starts under their belt because I kind of feel maybe after, I don't know, anywhere between five to 10 starts, you can kind of get a gauge of what the horse's running style is going to be. And so this is the another stakes race that's on the card. It's this open mind stakes. And um, these horses, they have, you know, enough starts uh, under the belt. I think there's one horse here that only has six starts. Yeah, the three horse. But even then, um, I kind of feel that's enough to know where the horse likes to be. You know, um, they ran a, a fast opening quarter here in their first off the layoff. They've pretty much been, you know, I mean, within one length, you know, the whole time. And the only time they really weren't was the synthetic and then the grade one. So, um I kind of, or I'm sorry, they were leading there. So I kind of feel you can get an idea, you know, a after a while. So this pace projector is probably going to be accurate. It says here the three horse is going to be leading and the five horse is going to be just to the outside. That's probably going to be how it's going to be when you watch this race. Or if you're watching this after, you know, the 14th, that's probably how it's going to look on the replay. Um, you know, it says here that these other three, that they're pretty much going to be bunched up somewhere in the back. Now, as you see here, it doesn't give this um, a fast pace rating, you know, like it did for the Iroquois. And um, again, that's just something else that sometimes you just have to make your own decision, you know, um, just because it says it's not going to be a fast pace. That doesn't mean that, you know, maybe um, the five is going to press the three or maybe something happens with the three where they stumble at the start and they're going to have to do some catching up and then they're going to be ending up pressing one of the other horses. So, um don't take the pace projector for, okay, it says exactly this, that is exactly what's going to happen, because that's not how horse racing works, right? Um, you know, so tomorrow, uh, you know, when you watch the Iroquois, will the 7 be in front? Maybe. You know, in my opinion, it's really too early to tell. They've only ran one race, and it was a maiden race. You know, is the 10 going to be the one trailing? You know, maybe, you know, so... Um, you know, is it going to, and even then, is it going to be a fast pace? There are times where I said it's going to be a fast pace, and I look at that past performance, and it looks like it's going to be a fast pace, but sure enough, they run some opening quarter, like 24 or 25, and it's like, okay, where's the fast pace that, you know, that not only I thought, but also time form thought it was, you know, so that's just something else, you know, that, that I really like to look at, and it gives me an idea, you know, if I think it's going to be a fast pace, who are the horses coming from the back? You could probably make the distinction on your own if if you've you know been doing this for you know a year or two you can probably figure out who was the closer but sometimes it's just nice to see it right especially if it already gives you the number number 10 purple right um let's see so that's the pace projector the next thing i want to talk about are trainer ratings now um i like how the uh trainer you know the trainer statistics are laid out in time form it's up here in this right but i don't like the rating and it's because i feel like the rating is too subjective and so what you see here this is for steve asmussen um in the past year and so it goes back 365 days it says he has had uh you know a little over 2100 horses run under his name and 20 percent of them have one and it gives his rating 83 uh 93 and you know 20 percent that's that's pretty good, right? But that 93, if it were just to show that 93, that doesn't really mean anything to me. I really like to see, okay, in the past year, what's the sample, what's the 1%, and what's the in the money percent? You know, it does the same for the jockey. The past year, uh, Ricardo Santana's had just over 1,100 mounts, and he wins 17% of the time, and it's in the money 44%. Um, now, this hot cold, uh, what that does is it looks at the past 14 days, and it kind of just uh, sees, you know, how many wins or how many in the money, um, or how many times in the money they've been. So, um, I don't really make judgments based off that hot or cold, you know, I know some people like to make arguments that, oh, you know, the barn is heating up and it, you know, they're getting hot and they're at the past 14 days, you know, the, they've won five, seven races or whatever it is. Um, it's something I consider, but it's not really a, an end-all be-all for me. Um, and so, you know, those are the percents. And then, as you can see here, um, if you click on his name, 
it just gives you ratings. And so again, this is what I really don't like about time form because it says it's that he's okay with two year olds. The ratings go from zero to a hundred. So it says here, um, when his two year olds route, it's an 84. Now that doesn't mean anything to me, you know, what's the 1%, what's the sample size? Um, uh, when it's white here, like this white box, that means it doesn't have enough data to make, um, a decision on on where it's at it's giving him preliminary in 85 but there's times where there's only one start and um they finish on the money and time is going to give it 100 it's a white box but it says 100 so again the system isn't perfect that's something i really don't like about the trainer ratings and that's why i turn to other past performance products to um get the statistics that that i want um the next thing I'm going to talk about are speed figures. Now, time form, they are different in that they incorporate pace into the speed figures that they put out. And so they have unadjusted raw speed figures and they have adjusted pace, uh, adjusted pace figures. And so um, you can actually make this line here below the running line where it says 114, 111, 91, you can make that different things. You can make that into fractions. You can make it the leader, official, unadjusted. You can do you can do incremental or accrued splits. Um, I've set it up the way that I like to see it. Um, uh, if you want to use the adjusted uh, times, uh, basically what the adjusted times do is it takes into account run up and track variant. Um, and so that way, uh, you know, I mean, if, if the run up is, 200 feet, you know, like something you'd see at Gulfstream Park, the clock hasn't started yet, but the horses, they've already left the gate. Um, but time form, they take that time into account. When the gate opens, clock starts. Uh, and again, the variant, every, every track has a variant. Um, you know, even track variants will change from day to day. I know that the DRF form, uh, they have the uh, track variant charted. Uh, honestly, I really don't know a whole lot about track variant. In fact, I know almost nothing about track variant, except the basic knowledge that the track isn't the same today as it might be tomorrow or the next day. Um, and so speed figures, they are pace adjusted. And so uh, for me, you might want to upgrade a horse that may be, um, you know, they, all these fractions are red, you know, indicating that there was a fast pace and they still won the race. Or you might want to reconsider a horse where the fractions are blue, like you see here, Dennis's moment. Almost all his pace fractions here, they're blue, indicating that the race times were slow. But he still got a really high number and he still wired the field and, you know, he beat the field by almost 20 lengths. Um, would I downgrade Dennis's moment based off that? No. But if Let's just say it was, you know, they were in first by a length and in first again at the next pace, pace call by a length. And then they won the race by a length. I I might downgrade that horse. Actually, I, I probably would downgrade that horse because they got. it sounds like they got an easy lead. The fractions were slow and really they were kind of set up in the race. You know, now let's just say these fractions are red and the horse finished second by a length i might consider to upgrade that horse because it shows to me okay the horse ran fast fractions they only lost by a length but the speed figure it would reflect that so dennis's moment it says here that his unadjusted figure was 125 but because it was a slowly ran race and it looks like really no one pressed him it was downgraded to a 119. now if we click here on on the chart um, you can look at all the horses, you know, pace figures they ran, their final time, their t final uh, speed figure, unadjusted and adjusted. So I'm going to bring up the horse number. Uh, this isn't what I wanted. This isn't what I wanted to look up. What one was I going to look up? Um, anyway, so you might see horses. Let's see if it is on this chart where uh I like okay here so number one a elite class they finished uh both you know behind this number this number seven ghost lore but it gave ghost lore a 76 and it gave elite class a 77 and that is because elite class was probably in the front with 
uh, than his moment. And that's, I haven't watched the replay, so I don't know. And it says it right here that he was in the front. And so it gave his unadjusted figure a 62, the same as the horse who finished right behind him, this number eight visual artist. But it says, okay, because he was up front pressing the pace, we're going to adjust it up to a 77. The same thing was done here with number six, um, you know, 84. The final number was 74 unadjusted, but because they were probably up there, you know, they might have not, they might not be setting the fractions or even pressing, but they're probably up close to the pace. It gave them a whole 10 other points from 74 to 84. Um, you see here number four, it almost didn't adjust anything at all. So they, I really like um, time form for that and that they will adjust each individual horses, not only unadjusted, but adjusted. Because if you had a horse that was in front the whole time and they lost by neck because they were setting really fast fractions um, on uh, like a buyer speed figure, their number will still be below the winner. But that's not, that shouldn't always be the case, right? Because if a horse was in front setting fractions going fast and they lose by a neck, I mean, the speed figure should be faster compared to a horse who came from the back and then just kind of passed all these other tired horses. Um, another part of the speed figures that I like about time form is that they can be easily related to horses that are shippers from Europe. So time form, um, I believe they did start in Europe and time form US is just kind of a, a subset of that. And so I pulled up a chart here from last week in the seventh in which there was, um, a few runners who were shipping from overseas. So they had this one here, this Pedro Cara. They're coming in, they were racing in, uh, it looks like Spain and France. So t what Timeform uh, did is um, the numbers aren't the same. A 93 in Europe is not e equal to a 93 in America. But what I have found kind of over time, I haven't found this written anywhere, is that if you add 10 to 20 to the European number, you should get a ballpark figure of what the horse can run. And so what I'm going to do, I'm going to do this on the fly, because um, I haven't seen the, the final figures for this uh, Jockey Club Derby. So a thread of blue was there. And it says he ran a 116. Okay, so this is a great example of what I'm talking about. So Pedro Cara ran a 93 in Europe. Okay, so you add on, like I said, 10 to 20. You should get anywhere from 103 to 113. That should just be a ballpark. But look here, the horse ran a 120. You know, this other horse here, San Huberto, uh, was running in France. Look, he got a one. He had been running a 101. Now 101 in Europe. You know that's going to be better than this 93 that was also in Europe. Those numbers they are on equal, you know. But 101, that means that uh, San Huberto should be able to run between a 111 and a 121. And look at that 116, kind of right there in the middle. So that's what I really like about time form, especially for something like the Breeders' Cup, because it's so hard to evaluate. How are these horses that are running overseas, how do their speed, speed figures compare to horses who are here in the U.S.? Now, is this perfect? Absolutely not. There are times where I have, um, I have said, okay, San Huberto should run between a 111 and a 121, and that should make him competitive with a lot of these other horses here. You know, Thread of Blue enough at 3 to 1. You know, he's running in 110s to 115s. Um, you know, Henley's Joy, same, 110s to 115s, 6 to 1. Um... So I think that I think that I have found this the best on Breeders' Cup Day or races where there's a lot of European shippers, you know, coming in. Um, and something else that I like about um, what Time Form does is the um, they will sometimes it depends how big the track is. They will sometimes put in these little notes. And so this one here for Spanish Mission. Um, it gives an, it gives a little comment about it. It says here, you know, it was purchased for 125,000 by double mission. It kind of gives you a brief breeding background 
Um, it says here that it's a half sister to smart. I have no idea what that's supposed to mean in European terms. It's a smart one mile to uh, um, was that ten furlongs or nine furlongs winner Talco out of a half sister of an Irish 2000 Guinness winner Bachelor Duke. So depending how much money I'm putting down or if I'm really trying to find value, I might look up these horses in Equibase. Um, you know, but uh. You know, it, oh, and in addition, it also says here, you know, uh, you know, this is kind of what happened, you know, because sometimes it's so hard to see, you know, I don't know what this means, like steadied and dropped in behind, held up in rear, still plenty to do, and I, I don't know what that meant, I don't know what that means, but it kind of, is, it, here, it kind of tells you what happens. Um, let's see. Raced off the pace, traveled better than most, uh, still plenty to do furlongs out, good headway over one furlong out, kept on well, not given at all, hard time, never near, sure to improve, and one to be interested in, and sure enough, won the next one now, and it says, it, you know, it kind of gives a comment, you know, and sometimes I'll put in here, you know, might be aiming to run here, here it says here, um, already have an eye on a viable prize in America in the same month, um, it's your, and it says here was probably a little unlucky not to win, you know, so it gives you these little comments, you know, and especially for the breeding, you know, but again, that might not always be there. Here, look at this one. Um, 700,000 euros, two year old by, sax, uh, by Scat Daddy, six foul, you know, so it kind of gives you, you know, a quick breeding. What is it to look out for, you know, as far as siblings or as the, the dame? And then it kind of gives you how did the race run for this horse. So uh, the next thing that I'm going to do um, is the horse rating. So in my opinion, horse rating, uh, and I guess I should group breeding and rating together. So rating, in my opinion, it hasn't really been that helpful. Um, kind of after a while, I can kind of figure out who's good on what surface and who's bad. I think basically what this does, is it kind of uses a cross of the, the sire, you know, it uses their ratings, and then the dame. And you see this dame was unraced, so it doesn't give any ratings. Um, you know, it gives the dame, and even then, there's no rating. So I, I don't really know how this rating is supposed to work. I Again, I don't, really don't use it. I have heard people that use it, and I think they use it more for, like, maybe synthetic or grass to get an idea of how good the horse is supposed to be. Um, but again, the the... Aside from the rating, this whole breeding part has, to me, been pretty helpful, um, especially for, um, you know, maiden uh, races or horses who are first-time starters. So, um, for example, uh, this one here, it says, by dialed in, by this horse, do you know what I mean? So, um, you can click here on the breeding. Uh, you can look at the sire and see, okay, you know, maybe you're not familiar with who Dialed In is, you know, and it says here, you know, he won almost a million dollars. His top figure was 119, and that is translated uh, for a time form figure. The Dame won almost, you know, 125,000, went over 125,000. Um, and then it gives you siblings. So it says here, this is the first foul from, from this horse. Um, if you look here at this one, you know, this horse didn't win. But, you know, has a sibling. By into, and it says here, buy into mischief. And this is this is what the horse has done so far. Horse has never finished out of the money. And they've won almost $60,000. And so I, I do like this. Um, I have used it. There are times where you look at a horse that's like 20 to 1. And then you look here and you're like, whoa, you know, the dame, they won a million or half a million. Like, why is this, you know, they're, they're bred to succeed. You know, okay, so here here's one. This horse here. Um, dame was in a race, but... Some sibling has just won an extraordinary amount of money, and that one is brilliant speed. So um, you see here, there's another one. Okay, that's not one million, but still 340,000. That's pretty good, right? And so it tells you, you know, it's you know, they're who the other siblings are by. So you know, I think all of these are half siblings. Um, you know, so we'll, we'll see if I can find. Uh, I don't know. Okay, so this day, look at that. They're 12 to 1 in the morning line, but they've done something, right? They they won almost, you know, a quarter of a million dollars. 
they look to be bred pretty well but into mischief. So sometimes what I'll do is I'll see, okay, this lady Belsara, I'll just look at my I'll just look them up in Equibase. It looks like they did their best running on synthetic. So I'll look to see, okay, how was you know, was that uh, sprinting? Was that routing? Was that five furlongs, six furlongs? Did they like to run far? You know, maybe they wanted to maybe they like to run a mile and a half. Um you know, it doesn't look like the siblings have really done much. This is the full sibling, and I mean, they're three times in the money. So sometimes, if especially if they're a full sibling, I'll go look to see, okay, what's gone on with that horse? Oh, look, there's another full sibling, you know. They won once out of four times, and I don't know what's going on with Noelle's mischief. Um, so, again, that's another... This is another part of time form that I really like. That's not something that you're going immediate, to immediately be able to find on, uh, you know... The form or Brisnet or the Equibase PP or whatever. Um, so you see here, this one like that almost 200,000. So, um, you know, oh, look at this one, you know, 318,000. You know, so um, again, it's something I that I really look at. Uh, the next thing um, is the, the chart. I, I already kind of, you know, We've already looked at a chart here. We can look at another one. We'll just look at the one from Dennis's moment because people know who he is. Um, and so, you know, like I kind of already said, it gives you the race fractions and the adjusted fractions up here. It gives you all the payouts and what the race rating was. Um, something that I haven't mentioned yet that you might have seen is it says here Fast 7. And so Fast is obviously what the, what the dirt was rated that day. But the seven is another measurement they used for kind of um, how fast or how slow the dirt might have been. I haven't really been able to find how I can really use that yet, um, and I've still had sex without it, uh, success without it. So um, you know, we'll see. Um, and then the last thing I wanted to point out, or one of the last points I wanted to make was about the notes and so sometimes note keeping it can be pretty tedious right and you might have to make you know maybe a note in your stable mail or or whatever um what I like about time form is you can just put a note and the note will stay there and so um I don't write notes too often unless there is just something glaring about the trip or about the surface and I want to make note in case I see that horse run again. Now the thing is, is the note pretty much stays there. And so if you want to delete it, too bad, it's pretty much there. So this one, um, I think this horse was supposed to run at Colonial. And so, you know, today is September 13th and this horse ran last week, but I made a note there on 8-8. Uh, sire, 11% turf, 7% first turf. And so, um, there is probably a reason why I put that in there. Maybe I was considering the horse to win or, you know, they're making the first start. Yeah. Cause it was, it was before the 11th. So maybe they were making their first start and I wanted to see how painter does, you know, on turf and, but you know, that, that note is there. Right. And I'm, you know, from eight, eight, I think he's, I think that horse scratched that colonial and then they end up running back at Laurel. And so it was kind of good, right? Because I'm sure on August 11th, when I pulled up that past performance, it's already there for me, you know? So that's, this is, like I said, I don't make notes too often. Once they're there, they're kind of there and I can show you what happens, you know? So I don't know, I'm just gonna put scratched, right? Cause that's what happened. And chances are I might not see this horse again. So there you click save and it says they're scratched, right? And then um, if you go back to it, it's green. And there it says scratched. Um, so that's the note. I mean, for the most part, that's pretty much all of the, you know, key points I wanted to make up about time form. It pretty much has anything else you want. It has works here at the bottom. It'll show you, uh, it will show you works that the horse has ran lifetime. So I, I do like that. I mean, but do you really care about a work that was ran on May 17th? Maybe um, it shows you, you know, where the horse ran uh, their next race. So um, this one here between July 22 and this one, they had ran their last race here at where this uh, line is. Um, so like I said, it, it might be useful for some of these two-year-olds or maybe you're trying to track um, a horse who's making their second or third start. But, you know, 
So, I mean, let's see. This horse here has 25 starts. They're four years old. I I don't really care how the horse is working out in 2017, you know. And I don't really, I don't scroll that down. I don't scroll uh, that far down. But maybe what I'll use this for is for a pattern, right? Okay, so this horse went at fairgrounds, and they rate they got a 101 on the rating. Um, how were they working out? You know, it looks like they had worked out slower. And, of course, you know, there is a bit more to it, you know. The horse might have a slow clocking, but maybe that's intentional. So again, works. I mean, that's something for a for uh, for another video. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much all I wanted to highlight on the time from video. Um, if you have any questions, you can message me on um, on Reddit. You can talk to me on Discord, or you can leave a note uh, on the YouTube video. Um, thanks for watching, and I hope to see you again on my next video.